Okay. Well, why don't we go ahead and get started? We may continue to have others join us, but I'm so grateful to all of you who are here today. Um, welcome to SDSU and specifically to the College of Arts and Letters. Um, what we're going to do today is I'm going to start off by giving a, a brief overview of the college, um, but then we'll get to what you all want to hear, which is um, you want to hear from our current students. And so um, the majority of our time today will be uh, with five of our current students, um, and you'll get a chance. I will start up with some, some questions I have for them, but then you'll have a chance to ask questions of both the students um, and of me. So um, hopefully that sounds good to you, and we want to make sure we can address as many of your questions today as possible. So let's go ahead and start. My name is Carrie Sable, and I'm the Assistant Dean for Student Affairs in the College of Arts and Letters. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, share my screen with you. And let's go to present, put it back here. Okay, so again, welcome to the College of Arts and Letters. Um, I, I, as I said, my name is Carrie Sable, and the College of Arts and Letters um, we often refer to as CAL. Uh, CAL uh, is kind of our uh, abbreviation for it, and you'll hear me using that throughout the presentation. Uh, the College of Rights and Letters is a large, extremely diverse college. Um, we have about 36 majors in the humanities, social sciences, ethnic and gender studies, and um, languages. Our mission is to educate individuals who can think creatively about the challenges of the 21st century. Um, as we've all experienced in the last year, um, you know, with the current global pandemic, um, not everything is figured out. Um, we need to develop a new set of graduates who can be nimble enough and flexible enough, creative enough to apply new skills to solve new problems. Um, and so that's really our goal. And we all, uh, aim to develop students that are socially responsible, culturally competent, purpose-driven, and prepared for meaningful and impactful careers after graduation. So that's really what we're about. Um, I'd like to share a brief video of, um, welcome from our Dean of the college, Dr. Monica Casper. I'm Monica Casper, new Dean of the College of Arts and Letters. I wanna share with you a few highlights about the college and let you know my plans as we navigate the future together during this most precarious time in history with COVID-19 in our midst. You may wonder who I am. Here are a few details. I'm a Chicagoan born and bred. I was a first generation college student, grateful for scholarship support that enabled me to attend a top liberal arts school I'm a sociologist who studies women's health, trauma, gender-based violence, and reproductive health care, among other topics. I'm a mom to two daughters, 18 and 16, the oldest of whom started college this fall in Arizona. I'm currently revising my next book, which is on racism, survival, and infant mortality in the United States. I'm an avid gardener and wildlife enthusiast, and I am thrilled to be back in California, where I completed my graduate work and also held my first tenure track job at UC Santa Cruz. I could not be happier to be leading Cal, a diverse, vibrant community of scholar teachers, active learners, and steadfast supporters. This college has it all. Languages, social sciences, humanities, and STEM fields all under one roof. A student can study poetry, social movements, water quality, comics, racial justice, and Arabic without ever leaving Cal. And did you know this year we've introduced new programs and degrees, including a language, culture, and society major, a new minor in science, technology, and society studies, the Center for War and Society, an interdisciplinary human rights initiative, a new pop culture certificate, and the American Indian Studies online certificate through our partner, the Global Campus. Our faculty and students lead innovative research at the forefront of critical issues affecting local, state, national, and international communities. 
I'm so proud of the accomplishments of our talented and dedicated alumni. Successful Arts and Letters alums engage in career fields such as education, business, government, economics, journalism, and many other challenging and fulfilling professions all around the world. And I'm grateful for the support from a vast array of donors and other supporters who believe in the important work of the college and ultimately the students. I'm looking forward to meeting you to learn about your ideas for further growth and development of key Cal programs. Okay, well, sorry to cut off Dean Cass for a little early there, uh, but um, it was great to hear from her. Um, Dean Casper came to our college last summer and we've been really thrilled to work with her this year. So um, I'm excited to have her continue in that role. So before I show you our full list of majors in the College of Arts and Letters, I thought it would be helpful to show you some ideas and concepts that our students study across majors. So some of the topics um, that you will be introduced to as a Cal student are things like gender and sexuality, the dynamics of human experience, wealth and poverty, identity, civic responsibility, class and race, um, legal uh, foundations and laws, uh, communicating across cultures. Um, these are some of the kinds of topics that students study as part of Cal majors. So let me show you our full list of majors. As I mentioned, we have 36, 37 if you count them slightly differently, but uh, you can get an idea from this list here. Um, at, you know, everything from Africana studies to political science and philosophy to humanities and languages um, such as Japanese, French, Spanish. Um, and so we have a, a wide range of disciplines that students study in our college. Just wanna um, share a few highlights of the college. We have a number of nationally recognized academic programs. Um, probably the most notable of those is our International Business Program, which was ranked fourth in the nation among public universities and eight overall among undergraduate programs according to US News and World Reports. We also have the oldest women's studies program in the US and the second oldest LGBT studies program. Um, so those are all things that we're really proud of. And of course, we're proud of our, our graduates, our alumni now. Um, last year, we awarded um, almost 1,200 bachelor's degrees in the College of Arts and Letters. Um, and our students are going on to a wide range of opportunities, um, many to graduate schools at places like University of Chicago Law School, um, Georgetown, Berkeley. Um, some are uh, doing research and graduate study abroad through the US Fulbright Program in uh, Malaysia and Romania. We have students who joined the Peace Corps and are doing service abroad. Um, also students who are um, working with Teach for America. Um, and um, we've had students going uh, on into military positions. And of course, many, many that are working in nonprofit or private, private industry. And we're proud of them all. Um, as a student in the College of Arts and Letters, it's important to us that our students engage uh, well in the classroom academically. But we also see opportunities outside the classroom as equally important. And we offer a number of engagement opportunities to um, apply what you're learning in the classroom to uh, real life experiences through things like study abroad. Um, and we offer programs all over the world. In fact, we have 13 academic programs that require a study abroad experience. Um, we also um, want students to participate in internships so that they get a chance to try out their fields and again, apply what they've learned in the classroom. Um, we also offer opportunities to work with our faculty on undergraduate research. And in fact, we also offer an undergraduate research journal where our, our undergraduate students, even in you know, your first or second year, you can have your research published. Um, which many students don't do until at least uh, the graduate level, if not once they're working uh, professionally in academia. So that is a great opportunity. Um, the journal is edited by students and run by students. So it's a pretty uh, cool initiative that not many places offer. Okay, and I'm actually going to go ahead and skip to the end of my presentation so that we can get to the best part, which is hearing from our current students. So I'm going to sh stop sharing my screen now. We have five current Cal students that are here with you today representing a wide variety of majors. 
and also opportunities that they've engaged in outside of a classroom. So what I'm going to ask them to do is I'm going to ask them to start um, by introducing themselves, um, your major, your year in school, your hometown, if you're comfortable with that. Um, and then I'll go to some other questions. So go ahead and jump in, uh, panelists. I can get it started. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. My name is Justina, Justina Colotage. My name might sound and look a little, we, a little weird. Um, and it's because I'm from Poland. I'm an international student here at SDSU. Um, born and raised there. I just came here almost four years ago uh, to study. I am thus a four year, fourth year student. I am a graduating senior and I'm double majoring. So I'm majoring in international economics and also political science. So I'm faithful to our college. Both of my majors are in the College of Arts and Letters and I absolutely love it. Uh, and then once we get to uh, any other questions, I'm more than happy to elaborate on my um, involvement around campus and anything else that you all will be interested in. Thanks, Justina. We'd like to go next. I think I can go next. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming, for joining us. Welcome to the College of Arts and Letters. Um, my name is Zihao Zhou, and I'm a second year majoring in international business with an emphasis in Spanish and Latin America. And I'm originally from China in a place called Guangzhou. And I came here to the United States when I was 14. Just uh, excited to have you all and hope you all enjoy it. Thanks, Zihao. Is next. Hi everybody, my name is Isaiah Ballantyne. I'm a fifth year women's studies major minoring in American Indian studies, which both happen to be in College of Arts and Letters. Um, I can't wait to hear everybody's questions. Um, I'm excited to answer. Thanks Isaiah. I guess that leaves me. So hi everybody, my name is Armando Sepulveda II. I'm a fifth year studying political science and I've taken a lot of RWS courses as well. Um, I'm so sorry, that is my dog. Um, and uh, I'm from San Diego, California. I'm from Imperial Beach, uh, so just south of SDSU. And I'm really excited to hear all your questions and I really appreciate you all being here. Great, thanks Armando. And is Adri able to answer yet? Okay, she may not, but hopefully she'll be able to join us again soon. I know she was having some difficulties, so. Um, well, great. So let me go ahead and start with um, a question um, that I, maybe, I'm guessing maybe some of our participants here today are, are making decisions about college. So if you could, panelists, talk about, you know, what factors were most important to you when you were deciding on a college? I'll start us off. Actually, Ad, sorry, I was going to ask, uh, Ad, I see Adri has arrived. So Adri, would you mind introducing yourself briefly first? <laughs> hi, yes, I'm so sorry. I got disconnected from the call and stuff, but hi, hi everyone. It's so nice to see so many people here. Um, my name is Adri. Um, uh, I am currently a senior in the College of Arts and Letters, and I am a double major in Spanish and International Security and Conflict Resolution. Um, I'm really excited to talk to you guys about my major and stuff. And I'm originally from Chicago, but I um, moved to California when I was starting middle school. So I lived in Irvine for, for a few years. So I consider that to be like my hometown. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to be here with you guys. So thank you for having me. Thanks, Adri. Okay, Isaiah, I think you were going to answer the question, so feel free. Yes, so as a first generation college student, I wasn't exactly sure what to look for when starting to go to school. So I kind of based on location a lot. And I'm from Northern California and it gets really cold here. So I definitely want to go somewhere warm. And then I toured the campus and it was so beautiful and I really liked it. And that's the campus alone is kind of what helped me make my decision. And I also wanted to go, I wanted to stay in California, but go as far as I could from home. Hey, thanks. Anybody else wanna comment on the factors that were important to you in looking for a college? 
Yeah, I can go next. Um, for me, location was also a really important factor. Um, I knew I really wanted to stay in Southern California because being from Chicago and having lived in California for a few years, I just fell in love with being by like the ocean and the warm weather, obviously like no snow. Um, so it was really, really nice. Um, and I also wanted to stay close to my family and ironically, like my family ended up moving. So now they're like far again, but um, uh, yeah, location was, was another big thing for me and, and warm weather. <laughs> That's I guess I'll go. Um, so I had applied to multiple CSUs and UCs, uh, and, and I got accepted to San Diego State and Sac State, along with um, uh, CSU Northridge. And so when I was trying to figure out where I wanted to go, I really wanted to be close to home. And I really wanted to like find a program that I thought would serve my community best. And SDSU offered one of the best political science programs out there. Uh, in addition to that, uh, you know, I was a commuter student, I didn't have a car, and we had a trolley station right built right on our campus, so I decided to go ahead and just uh, hop on the trolley, and I did a tour of SDSU, and it was a really great campus, and uh, yeah, I fell in love as soon as I started. I'm glad you mentioned the trolley on campus, too, because I think that's such a nice feature uh, that isn't always yeah, available in many places. Anybody else want to answer that one or we can move on to the next one? Yeah, I can add a little bit uh, more to that question. I think very similarly to Armando, I think I was uh, I got really benefit from from the trolley station because it was so flexible. We could get anywhere from anywhere in San Diego. And since I also commute, I think proximity to where I live and I currently live was very important in when I was choosing which college to attend. Second, it was financial aid. I think uh, as a first generation student, San Diego State really uh, tried to help me and uh, navigate through the system and allowed me to apply to so many scholarships that enabled me to attend college. I was first, when I was a senior in high school, I was choosing this between UC Berkeley and uh, San Diego State. And then I compared the financial aid. And at the end, San Diego State gave me the most uh, financial aid available. So that's one of the reasons I. I decided to attend um, San Diego State. Also, because San Diego State was so diverse, we could find uh, students and classmates from anywhere in the, around the world. People often say, um, net, your net worth is equals to your network. So I think being able to socialize with multiple backgrounds, people with all backgrounds around the world was really important for me. That's great. Thank you. Why don't I go ahead and move on to the next question. So once you chose SDSU, why did you choose your major? Um, and in that major, what do you study? I think, you know, some of these major names are, it's not really obvious what you study as in that major. Um, and so if you could talk a bit about that, and also if you have one, um, what's your favorite class you've taken um, as part of your major? That's a big question, I think, because uh, choosing your major is a very big decision. And uh, being just a senior in high school, for example, uh, and sometimes even a transfer student, it, it's kind of difficult to pick what you really want to do, especially when you're interested in so many things, which I think uh, all of us students really are. Um, I am an international economics uh, student, and then I added political science as my second major. But um, as a high school student, I picked economics because um, I was really interested in like global economic systems. I wanted to know why things happen. Uh, I think politics, economics, or societies, all of that is uh, interconnected. And I wanted to understand how all of that works, what I can do to help it work better. Uh, but to do it, I had to understand it. Um, and also economics was is an interdisciplinary study. You can absolutely focus on specific things. And uh, I know some, some folks here were in our economics uh, session just before this one. So you find out more, a little bit more about this, but we have emphases in, um, in public policy and quantitative analysis. Um, so you can focus on specific things, um, but you can also stick to international or regular economics and, and um, learn this interdisciplinary approach to how our systems work in the 21st century. Um, so that's really why 
I picked it. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do professionally uh, those four years ago. So I thought that economics was a good choice where I was still studying a very specific field. So understanding uh, business cycles, um, our fiscal policy, that's some things that you learn in economics, but also still having many opportunities in the future once I graduate. Um, and then my favorite class, that's really hard to pick, there were so many, uh, but I really, really loved um, the class that the course named, I think it's um, Economic Issues of the Middle East. Mm -hmm. And some of you have heard me say, talk about this one before, um, but uh, it's, it was a really, again, kind of an interdisciplinary class, which really talked about economic issues in a very specific region, um, but it gave, us, gave me a good idea of how things work in the Middle East, in the MENA, how they work here, how they're interconnected. My professor was amazing, Professor Fode. He really inspired me. Um, and that kind of also gave me a better idea of what I'm really interested in within economics as well. And the Middle East and the issues, issues in the Middle East uh, is something that I'm now really interested in. So that one really helped me a lot, but there's so many that I could talk about, but I'll stop here to let some other students answer the question. That's great, Justina, thank you. I'll go ahead and go. So like Justina, I really wanted to study politics uh, because, you know, it's what makes the world function. And as we've seen, we really need people who are invested in the communities that they're serving. And I've always wanted to enter public service. So it was just kind of a natural fit. Um, one of the things that, you know, a lot of people don't understand is like when they hear the word political science, they're like, how can you make a science out of politics? Like people are unpredictable. But really it's about you know understanding all the complex intricacies that governments have between each other like what's the relationship between the state what's the relationship between the federal government and what do cities really play a role in um and you know you just end up loving it and you know there's so many unique niches inside of political science that you don't necessarily associate with it uh and that goes into my favorite course which was taught by james murin uh, and that's poli sci 440, um, which is food justice. And when you think about the, the title of the course, you're like food justice, what does that mean? You end up learning about, you know, food deserts. You end up learning about what it is to really be a lobbyist for the food industry. And it's so incredibly detailed about how he goes about that class that it completely changed my perspective on, on poli sci, just because you you realize how in depth everything goes, but um, I want to go ahead and pass it off to another student. And yeah, thank you for that question. That's great, Armando. Thank you. Anybody else want to address that one? I can go ahead and go. Um, so for me, I am a double major in Spanish and ISCOR, which stands for International Security and Conflict Resolution. And um, it kind of like when I tell people that they don't really know what it means, so I, I always have to elaborate. It's kind of one thing I love about my major is that it's really unique. SDSU um, is like the only school that I know of with this sort of program. And I didn't even um, actually know that it was a major until the end of my freshman year. So I actually came into SDSU wanting to do um, a double major in Spanish and political science. Um, but someone informed me about like the ISCOR program and what it was about. And when I learned about it, I kind of thought that, you know, this sounds really cool because it's very interdisciplinary. Um, for example, for my major prep, I've had to take stuff like anthropology, geography, economics, political science, religious studies. Like I literally have taken like one of everything, um, which is really cool because I feel like it gives me um, you know, a lot of different perspectives and worldviews um, and has just exposed me to a lot. And then um, my Spanish degree, I mean, I knew I wanted to study Spanish in college because I really, really loved studying it in high school. And I had a teacher in high school who I actually still talk to who, when I, you know, told her I got into SDSU for like to study Spanish, she was like, you have to go, like you'll speak so much Spanish there and stuff. So um, I already was really set on that. And then deciding on my second major, you know, I was, I was a little late because I officially declared it uh, well, not not late, but I officially declared it at the beginning of my sophomore year, but I haven't looked back since because I honestly love it so much. Um, it's really cool because for ISCOR, you get to pick an emphasis. So um, I'm currently studying, my emphasis is environment and security, which is like sustainability, but you can also study justice in the global system or general conflict and conflict resolution. 
And um, for me, I'm really passionate about the environment. So I really like that my major has allowed me to focus on um, issues like climate change and, you know, like deforestation and things like that and allowed me to do a lot of research on those topics. Um, and then it's kind of funny that I, I didn't um, stay or I didn't stay political science because I'm actually going to be staying at SDC for the next two years to get my master's in political science. So um, and I'll be staying within the College of Arts and Letters, which is really exciting. Um, but yeah, I think that that's kind of it about my major. It's, it's just really cool because you get to pick what kind of whatever classes you feel fit your interests for your emphasis. And I feel like it's really like you can really personalize it to what you want to do. And um, I guess the, this other thing I should say is that my favorite thing that my major director has ever said about my major is that the point of the major is to teach you how to solve problems that don't exist yet. So um, I'll conclude with that. So if anyone else wants to talk. Yeah, that's beautiful. I think that was such a, such a good illustration of what I was talking about at the beginning is preparing students for the you know, 21st century challenges. So that's great. Um, why don't I go ahead and ask the next question, but feel free, anybody, if you didn't answer this one, you can jump in on the next one, um, because I think it's related. Um, what can you do with your major after graduation? Um, if you're comfortable, share any um, graduate school or um, you know, future career plans that you have. Uh, I can go. I think kind of related to last question, I chose international business uh, with an emphasis in Spanish and Latin America because I wanted to take advantage of the language aspect of it. A little bit about more about my background is that although I was born in China, I spent 10 years in Mexico learning Spanish before I came to the United States. So I, as Keris mentioned at the beginning, as the world becomes more globalized and more connected, it is very important for us to be able to communicate and I think uh, when I was a senior in high school, I really valued that, uh, that emphasis in Spanish. And that's, that's what led me to choose this major. I think uh, for career paths, international business is more broad in comparison to, for example, more specific majors like marketing, finance, uh, real estate. And in, in this case, international business is more, more broad. You learn a little bit more about everything. And, for career choices, I want to. I would like to get into foreign trade, and I think uh, learn, uh, learning Spanish and meeting more people here at San Diego State will allow me to uh, expand my career choices. That's great. Thanks, Seattle. Anybody else want to tackle that one? Um, I can talk about mine. So I'm a women's studies major and American Indian studies minor. And with that, a lot of people think that the classes are just strictly about like women's history and women's issues today, but the jobs that you can get after graduation is actually really broad and you can pretty much do anything that's going to serve society in any areas that are underprivileged or minority groups. Like I've done a lot of volunteer work and working with the campus. Um, just, I worked with kids too. So it's actually pretty broad if you want to work with any it, like serve your community in any way, pretty much. There's like social workers, you can work at so many different nonprofits. So that's why I picked my major for the most part too. And I'm Native American. So I'm hoping with my minor in American Indian studies, I can go back and serve my community once I'm done with school. Awesome, thanks Isaiah. Anybody else? I think I, maybe everybody else already sort of addressed that when you talked about your majors, okay. Well, I'll go on to the next one. And before I do, though, I just want to say thank you for the questions that I see uh, people posting in the chat. Um, I have just a couple more questions for the panelists, and then we'll try to get to as many of those as we can. So keep, keep them coming. Um, so my next question is um, really that outside the classroom learning. So what kinds of opportunities have you been involved in outside the classroom? And how have these enriched your experience as an SDSU student? Go ahead. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, outside of the classroom, I've been really involved in our associated students government. Uh, I'm currently the vice president of external relations, which is one of the five executive officers here at AS. Um, 
And, you know, beyond AS, I also served as the VP of the College of Democrats uh, for our class. Um, and it's been really fun being involved in AS and really using my major to help understand the policy uh, because it, as VP external, I'm advocating to state legislators um, and telling them about the issues that students have uh, regarding financial aid, regarding um, gender equality, and regarding um, LGBTQ rights. Um, and all of the courses that I've taken in my major have bled into um, my role as VP external. Um, beyond that, for internships, I actually got an internship for my local county supervisor as well. Uh, and he was impressed with the coursework that I took for um, SDSU. So I took, you know, a political communications course. I took a uh, obviously food justice course. And a lot of those topic areas were um, issues that he wanted his intern to have. And along with my student le leadership role at the time, which was the lobby court chair, uh, he's like, yeah, you're on. And um, really getting involved outside of the classroom is really vital to the STSU experience. You can't get a full picture of like how great this campus is if you just stay in the classroom. And there's also a bunch of other political or not political clubs, but just clubs in general um, that the College of Arts and Letters has that I wish I would have gotten involved with more. You know, they had a geography club. There was a political science club. There was a pre-law society. And all of those, even though I didn't have time to do them, I know a lot of my friends who did them and they loved it. Um, so you just have to branch out and it really, your major kind of helps you nat naturally find those different uh, student groups on campus to get to. That's great. Thanks, Armando. It looked like Isaiah was maybe next. Did you want to jump in? Yes. So there's a lot of different cultural programs and groups on campus, and I'm part of the Ellie Mashuchop mentor program. Um, I was a mentee my freshman year and I really liked it and I probably wouldn't have gone through my freshman year without it. Um, you get a mentor and so I've been a mentor for four years now, this is my fourth year doing it. And I really like it. I get about three to five students um, every semester and you pretty much just mentor them through the college experience and connect them with different resources. And I was really thankful for being a part of that program. And I'm still being connected to different resources, even as a mentor. And I feel like it, it's given me a really good sense of community being at San Diego State University, where it was kind of a cultural shock because I'm from a really small town. And I had a really hard time, I think, adjusting to college life the first year. And this program really, really helped me. So and there's lots of programs, like I said, cultural programs and mentor programs. So I really recommend those because this one has helped. And I've also been able to network a lot with different events through the program. So it's not just the Ellie Mashu Chop one, but there's so many other ones that you can try to find a fit for. And they're really helpful. So I recommend those a lot. That's awesome. I'm glad you, you mentioned that because we do have a lot of um, cultural resource centers on campus that are a huge support for students. So that's great. Thanks, Isaiah. I actually have one more thing. I also did the Brave Project certification on campus, which is building resilience against violent engagement. I believe that's what it stands for. And um, that's been really helpful because you're basically becoming an advocate for people that are experiencing domestic violence and doing that. It was only like a week, I think, and I spent four hours, four days, four hours, four days throughout the week um, getting certified. So that was really cool that San Diego State offered that and it was on campus. So that was really cool too. Very cool, thank you. I could add more to it. Uh, so back in 2019, as a freshman, um, as a new uh, freshman in high school, I mean in college, uh, watching 30, almost 30,000 people walk around every single day was intimidating for me. Uh, I think I felt overwhelmed uh, watching so many people that I, I didn't know. I didn't have any friends or, nor knew any professors here at San Diego State. So one of the ways I became more connected to campus and the school itself was to get myself more involved. One of the first things I did uh, was also uh, participating in, in AS in a program called uh, First Year Leadership Experience, 
where you learn more about the structure of associated students and how can the organization help back to students and how it, it, it serves as a liaison between the president and the, the student body. Also, I was also I also became uh, involved in a club called Rotaract, which is a community service based uh, organization. Uh, for example, we did like de de delivering food for uh, homeless people across uh, San Diego, and that was really impactful not only for us but for them, of course. Furthermore, I also joined a fraternity, a professional business fraternity called uh, Delta Sigma Pi, which fosters the development of a business. And I think that really shaped into, uh, that led me into more of my passion, what I wanted to do in my life. I got connected to more people uh, and re actually received an internship opportunity from one of my friends uh, as a student research uh, in which I got paid, which was like, well, like wonderful. And I wouldn't have done that without my friends that I met through the fraternity and through AS. So I think that's, one of the cool experiences you can have around campus, just getting yourself involved. And as Armando said, you, you have to, you cannot get much experience if you just sit in the classroom. But if you decide to join um, multi -club, multiple clubs that you're interested in, you'll certainly find something you love. That's great. Thanks, Zihao. I'll just add. Yeah, and I don't know if Zihao mentioned it, but he's also one of uh, our representatives from the College of Rights and Letters to Associated Students right now. So we have three each year, and he has one of those. So yeah, so lucky to here. lucky to be there. <laughs> I can go next. Um, so I am also on the College of Arts and Letters Student Council with Zihao and Justina. Um, and I am the vice president of publicity. So um, I really have honestly like loved serving as the VP of publicity for Cal because it's made me aware of so many things that we have at SDSU that I was just like completely unaware of before. Um, for example, all of the identity centers as well as like different scholarships, the student research symposium, like it just has completely shown me that whatever you like SDSU has something for you to be able to expand your interests and like you know grow with it and um yeah the, my position on the College of Arts and Letters has been a lot of fun we have meetings every other week and uh, executive board meetings every week and you know it's been obviously different because it's been over zoom but I'm so lucky to have like the support of the Cal Council because um, you know, we, we, I just feel like they're all like, you know, some of my friends and it's just, it's not even like work or like, you know, being in like an extracurricular. It's just like, we meet up every week and they're there and they support us. And we also have our counselors like, um, Carrie and Michelle and Zach, who are so supportive of us and everything that we do. So that's just so amazing to have like, you know, a group of people like that and something like that, where I feel so supported and, um, you know, they're always connecting us to different resources, like for like mental health and self care, or like I said, like scholarships. Um, I actually recently found out about like this internship because of Cal, because of this position that I'm going to be applying to for the summer. Um, and then another thing that I've been really involved in in college has been Ignite at SDSU, which is um, a nonpartisan club for women interested in political science. Um, and as a woman who is interested in political science, it's been really great for me. Um, I currently serve as our external uh, relations officer. So I do things like, you know, getting speakers for us and like advertising and making sure that people know about our meetings. Um, and that's been a really great experience to have my like circle of, of women who support me through my professional goals and, and we celebrate each other, you know, all the time. It's like, you know, like this month is Women's History Month, but it's like Women's History Month year round with Ignite. So um, that's been really great. Um, but yeah, I think just the amount of support I found within those two groups has been so amazing. And, and like I said, I'm convinced that no matter what you're interested in SDSU, has some sort of like RSO, registered student organization or club or something for you. That's great. Thanks, Adri. And Justina, I'd love to have you jump in because you're a part of some things that our other panelists aren't, so. Thank you, Carrie. Yes, I'll be very brief because there's a lot of things that I do and I know we have a, a few more amazing questions to get to, but um, I'm also on the College of Arts and Letters Student Council. I was waiting for somebody to mention it. It's so important in this session, but yes, but it, that's been amazing. 
Um, so I'm VP of finance there, but um, I'm also involved in Greek life. I was a chairwoman in my sorority. I'm in a um, like social-based sorority. Uh, so Zihau is in a business fraternity. So we have a couple of different um, types of Greek life. Um, I'm also an SCC ambassador. So you'll see them probably today throughout sessions in our red polos. Uh, they help out with Explore, with uh, student orientation, many other things. We do campus tours as well, also virtually, which has been amazing. Um, and uh, I'm also president of International Student Association. So I'm an international student myself. So that's very close to my heart. And I love um, meeting international students there. But I also volunteer off campus. And that's been like one of the most amazing things. Um, I worked with an organization called Girls on the Run uh, when we were still able to do it in person. But that's been great to um, try, it out, try it out quite a few things on campus, but also off campus. Um, and I used our transit center for that a lot to get to, uh, to our practices when I volunteered. But um, honestly, when I started getting involved on campus is when my student life really took off. Um, so I, I would highly, highly recommend getting involved. And I think it's one of the best ways to really succeed. Um, as a student, obviously have academics. There's so many aspects of a student life here at SDSU. But like I said, when I started getting involved in Greek life, that was my first step. And then everything else that I do now as a senior, uh, that's when I, I started feeling most confident on campus. Uh, I started feeling like that's my, my home, my place to be. I got to know so many people. Um, so, so many people into Zoom and, and just so many people across this big campus. So those are just some of the things that I do. So I, I could talk about them for the rest of our Saturday, but we don't have time, but that's how passionate I am about them. And I'm sure all the other panelists would relate to that. That's great. Thank you all for addressing that question. I mean, I love just the variety of the things that you're involved in. And I think the common factor is that you all found kind of a home at SDSU by getting involved in some of these activities, which, as you said, it's critical on a campus of 30 plus thousand students. you got to find your niche. Um, and you've all done that so well. Um, rather than asking my last question that I had for you, I'm going to go ahead and, and ask, uh, we'll address some of the questions in the chat. Um, and I'll answer the ones that I sort of know and the ones that are student focused, I'll, I'll ask you to address. Um, first, I see uh, a question, a, a, a good question that I don't have an answer to yet. Um, will classes be in, uh, on campus or virtual for us, the fr uh, freshman class next year? Um, there's a pretty good chance that we will, you will have a number of in-person classes, but we're still waiting on public health guidance for those. Um, so we will have our fall class schedule released on April 12th, and we'll all know at that point um, whether they're going to be in-person or virtual. But um, so stay, stay tuned for that one. Um, here's a question for our panelists. What influences did you have when you were choosing your majors and minors? Not everybody has to answer either, but if one of you wants to address it. Um, I can really quickly say when picking my first major, um, I definitely relied on advice from my family. Um, so like I said, right in the beginning, um, it's not always easy as a high school student to just know this is what I'm doing. This is what, I'm what I want to study. So um, my family definitely influenced my decision, but then I had to make a decision on my own when I needed to um, start a different major or another minor. Uh, that was a choice that I had. And I did a lot of research on my own, but also I definitely use the resources that we had on campus and in our college. So I went to my department's advisor, Dr. Gordon, um, and I basically said, I'm so confused. I don't know what I should do. Can we please talk about this and can help me out with basically making one of the biggest decisions in my life right now? And um, and obviously my advisor did not choose for, for me, uh, but we had such an amazing discussion and um, it really helped me. She, she helped direct me in the right um, toward the right thing. And that made me choose political science as an our major because uh, I realized I can do it. It's, it was a lot of work that I took on, um, but I wanted to do this and also something that I was passionate about. So I definitely used the resources I had on campus, especially in that time when I was very, very confused. Okay, thanks, Justina. Um, we can ask another one since there are a lot here. Um, what are some of the reasons you like SDSU and how would you describe the campus culture?
I can go. Um, I guess one of the things I love about SCC is just our campus and just like how, like, I don't know, like just how much like stuff there is around. Like, I feel like in every corner of the school, like there's some place to like get food or there's some place to like sit down and relax and do homework. We have some really pretty like gardens. Um, I think in the video behind Dean Casper, it showed the Native American healing garden, which is new, which is really beautiful. We also have the koi pond. So I think that's one thing. Our campus is just beautiful. And it's been really sad, like obviously because of COVID, you know, I, I'm really lucky to still live close to campus. So like I can still go on a walk there every once in a while, but I really miss walking to class and stuff. Um, so, you know, obviously I'm, I'm hopeful that you know, we can make it so things are like in person. Um, but uh, another thing, I guess, like just about the culture, like I just think everyone has been really friendly. Like, even if I don't come out of my classes being like best friends with everyone in my classes, like everyone is still nice. And, you know, a lot of times teachers will have you do group work and, you know, break off into groups to do discussions and stuff. And I feel like students are, are really like interactive. And I don't feel like, you know, it's like, oh, you're put into groups and like everyone's ignoring you. Um, so I think that that's, I, th I would describe our campus cultures as being really friendly and like welcoming and, and open. That's great. Thanks, Adri. Uh, there were a lot of questions related to orientation, one of which I can answer, which is when we do, when do you start registering for classes? For new students, new freshmen, new transfer students, um, you'll register at orientation in the summer. Um, so you don't have to do anything really until then, although you'll start getting some pre-orientation materials that you'll need to work through. Um, you won't register for class until your orientation day. Um, and then for the students, though, for our panelists, um, have any of you had trouble getting into the classes you want? Um, and, you know, and has there been any impact on sort of your graduation timing because of that? I can, oh, go ahead a second. Okay, I can go. Um, I personally haven't had, I've been on the wait list for a lot of classes, but more often than not, if you email the professor and ask them to like let you into the class, they will, unless it's a huge class and you are like number 35 on the wait list. But I've never had that happen. And it's still, there's so many options to fulfill different requirements that it should never um affect your graduation status but I've never if you just email them and ask them to let you in or they'll let people in from the wait list like 10 out of 15 or something so you shouldn't have especially as freshmen I think um I'm pretty sure they get priority um registration so I don't think that there should be any problems with registration great thanks anybody have an alternative answer to that that they want to throw out yeah, I can kind of add on to that. I, I kind of feel the same. I feel like um, for my majors, I haven't really had too much trouble getting into classes like and it ha definitely hasn't messed up like my path to graduation or anything. Um, I was going to say like, actually, the only time I've maybe had a hard time getting into a class was for like a GE, especially for a lot of the, the general education requirements, they try to offer multiple sections of the same course. So if it's like history 101, there's like 10 sections, but um, um, there's, there have been like a few classes where they're only offering <clears throat> like one of them and I, I couldn't get in. But for my major classes, kind of like um, what Isaiah was saying, uh, if you email a professor and especially if it's like a, a course that you need to take at a specific time so that it doesn't mess up, like I said, your path to graduation, they're normally really accommodating and, and really understanding, which is, is one of the best things about our professors at SDSU. That's great. Thanks, Isaiah and Adri. Um, and I think we have time for one or two more quick questions before we need to end. Um, so I'll just go in, in the order that they came in. Based on your personalities and those of the students you've met, um, what type of person do you personally think thrives at SDSU? I could go ahead and go first real quick because I love that question so much. Okay. So um, when it comes to personalities that thrive at SDSU, you know, Really, there's a niche for everybody, um, depending on whether you're outgoing and bombastic or shy and reserved, it doesn't matter. You really can find your place on our campus. Um, but every single personality has one thing in common that I see, and that's passion. You have to be passionate about what you're studying. You have to be passionate about the clubs that you're in, and you have to be passionate about 
what career you want at the end. All of those people have that. And really, if you want to succeed, you just got to be passionate. You got you to gotta really put yourself out there, however you want to do that. That's great. Love that answer. Anybody want to add to that at all? Kind of on the same note, I was just thinking hardworking, motivated, and driven. Um, and kind of like Armando just said, if you can be shy and an introvert, that was me, you wouldn't recognize a sophomore year me, uh, probably from like compared to today's session, I feel very outgoing at this point, uh, you can be very outgoing as well. And uh, like Armando said, you find your place, but um, you have to be hardworking, whether it's your academics, your student life, you have to be motivated to attend professors office hours to apply to things to try things out. And I think um, anyone can be uh, hardworking, motivated, driven, passionate. Um, so any kind of student coming in, if you just keep that in mind and try to work on these um, qualities and this, these values, I think uh, you'll be, you're set for, for success. That's great. Those are great answers. Unfortunately, we are out of time for today's session. I wanna take a second to say thank you so much to our five panelists. Uh, for your um, you know, contributions to this. Um, it was really great hearing from all of you. So thank you so much. Um, and thank you to all of the participants who came today. I'm sure, I know we didn't get to all the questions in the chat. Um, if we didn't answer your question, please feel free to reach out to our Cal Student Success Center. Um, I'm putting the uh, email address in the chat. It's caladvising at sdsu.edu. Please send us your questions and we'll follow up with you and address them as best as we can. Um, and uh, thank you so much for taking some time on your Saturday to be with us. Uh, I wish you uh, a wonderful rest of your weekend. Thanks everyone.